I'd like to introduce you, I'm delighted to introduce you, to our new society president, um, who's taken over, you know, Ibrahim Asalahi was our president until he retired a couple of years ago, sadly, because of his health. And so now we have a new president, who is the Sudanese novelist, Leila Abdullayla. Um, is going to say a few words now. I'll just say a few about her, but um, as many of you will know, she's a novelist who writes in English. She lives in Scotland. She writes a lot about issues concerning identity, uh, Islamic spirituality, related issues. These are novels. This is not um, non-fiction. And uh, some of the issues we've talked about this year and in other years at SSS UK. So it, I think it fits in very well with some of our own programmes. She was the first winner of the Kane Prize in uh, Kane Prize for African Writing in 2000, and, 2000, yes, 2000. And then she later won the Saltire Prize in Scotland. That was last year, I think, um, for her novel. Now remind me which one. Elsewhere, Home, which we reviewed in uh, Sudan Studies in the last issue. So, um, you know, we're very pleased to welcome her, and I'll just let her say a few words. That are left, there are still some left, but she has to leave at half past three. She's flown down from Scotland specially for this meeting, and she has to fly back soon. Okay, well, thank, you, thank you very much for uh, giving me this, uh, this honour. Um, uh, especially uh, this this time in the history of Sudan, we've all been I mean, shaken and um, uh, moved greatly and been affected by all that we've uh, seen uh, happening in, in, in Sudan. And I'd just like to start by um, you know saluting the the shahada of the revolution, the young uh, men and women. Who, uh, who struggled and suffered and, and gave their, their lives. And uh, they, some of these young people don't even remember the time that some of us older people remember. They don't remember um, you know, the, 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 the good days that uh, Sudan saw in, in, in the past. And yet they, were, uh, they had the faith, they had the faith that Sudan could be a better uh, place. Um, I, um, I, I took part in some of the, the protests that I'm sure you all, you all did that took part here in, in, in the UK. And, um, um, you know, it, it was very nice to hear Dr. Assam mention the diaspora in his speech. And he always said that, uh, that he's, you know, he mentioned the Sudanese who raised the flag of Sudan outside. And um, I feel privileged to, to have been one of these people, and, uh, and maybe history will remember us that we were part, we were the diaspora living outside Sudan at the time when this uh, uh, momentous uh, event took place. Um, uh, whenever I went to the the, 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 the protest, I used to um, read out a poem that I uh, wrote. Uh, and the, the poem was uh, dedicated to the young women who were raped at the Khartoum <coughs> sit-in attack on June the 3rd, and I'll just share it with you now. Uh, to the young women who were raped at the Khartoum sit-in attack on June 3rd, know that you are innocent and honorable. You did not lose your purity. You did not lose your beauty. You did not lose your intellect. To the young women who were raped at the sit-in attack, my young sisters, Know that you are innocent and honorable. It is he, the criminal, who violated the oath of loyalty he had sworn, misused the gun he was entrusted with, betrayed the uniform which elevated him. It is he who is dishonorable, not you, and you did not lose your purity. It is he who is tainted, not you, and you did not lose your beauty, nor your intellect. You did not lose your future. It is he who is covered with shame, not you, and you did not lose your future. It is still there waiting for you. Lift up your head so you can see it. Um, so alhamdulillah, we, we, have, we are in the future. In the future now, we are seeing a, a, new, a new Sudan, hopefully. And uh, this, is, uh, this week, especially as um, a 
uh, Gisela Taib uh, reminded me, we had we there was uh, three women uh, received major awards. We had the artist uh, Kamala, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and also uh, the um, uh, the doctor who was appointed as, as the minister in Khartoum for the first time, right? Yes. And the third person was, sorry, Griselda. Professor Tisar Sayrul. Professor Tisar Sayrul, yes. Yeah. And who is the third one? Yeah. Huh? Leila Sheikh. Leila Sheikh, yes. Yeah. Lina Sheikh. Okay. Yeah. Lina Sheikh. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, will, I will very quickly introduce myself because some of you might not know me, and I promised Jillian that I will say who I am. Uh, my name in full, the way we say it in Sudan, four, four, four names, right? Uh, Layla Fuad Mustafa Abu Layla. And um, I grew up in Khartoum. I was educated at uh, the sister school and the University of Khartoum. I graduated from the Faculty of Economics in 1985. And then I got married and, and had a baby at the Rahbat Hospital as well. Um, then in 1987, I went to London and I did um, an MSc and an MPhil in statistics at the London School of Economics. Uh, my intention was to return to Sudan and become a university lecturer. Uh, however, things didn't go that way because my father-in-law, uh, Ahmed Mahjoub, was working in uh, Sudan Times. And uh, when the President Bashir uh, had the, uh, the press crackdown of 1990, um, the, the Sudan Times was closed and he was advised to leave the country to avoid uh, prison. Also, my mother, Professor Mona Khalifa, was, uh, she was the dean at the Cairo University Khartoum branch. And this was nationalized also. Um, and she had to leave, and so she left with her um, uh, Egyptian colleagues. And so with both our families living outside uh, Sudan, my, my, um, although my father did actually remain in, in, in Sudan, and he's, uh, he's actually buried now in his birthplace of Omdurman, but uh, because our families left, my husband and I decided to remain in, in the UK. And uh, because of my feelings of homesickness, and uh, I started to, to write. And, um, and so that's how I evolved into becoming a, a writer. Yeah. So, thank you.